Hey guys, Sol here from Tasty Records, back with a, by popular demand, uh, unboxing video for the YouTube channel. Um, before we begin, independent record shop here in uh, Greater Manchester, Altrincham, and we do loads of brand new, we do loads of pre-loved vinyl, and every so often we get the deluxe box set treatment, and I'm able to show it off to you. Today's episode is uh, this... I think this is the biggest box that we've done so far. This is Joni Mitchell, uh, Archives Volume 2, The Reprise Years, 1968 to 1971. So just at the start of her career there. Um, and this is 10 LPs, 10, 1, 0. Um, and it's a bit of a, a mega box. <laughs> nah, the, the thumbnail is something special. But um, mega box set for all the massive Joni Mitchell fans out there. Um, famously, or infamously, Joni Mitchell brought all her stuff off Spotify recently. So, this is a very kind of exclusive box set, and you can only get it on physical releases. Um, so getting it on vinyl is a real treat, honestly. Um, like I said, this is the early Joni Mitchell, so arguably the best stuff. Like, she got very jazzy um, later on in her career, but this is like the pure folk stuff from kind of her first album, and um, Song to a Seagull, oh, is it Song to a Seagull? And then it's blue, it goes into blue, I think it ends with blue, really, before she signed to another label. But uh, yeah, volume two, don't be put off by that, because this is the really popular one that people want. I'm struggling to kind of keep it uh, afloat, so should we take it over to the photo studio and we can kind of break this box open? Okay guys, here we are at the, uh, the photo area, the photo studio, and uh, here is the ginormous Joni Mitchell box set, ready in frame. Um, not, not as big as the Dark Side of the Moon box set, I'll say. I've got this record here handy. Um, this is just a regular kind of Beastie Boys record. Almost just as big as an LP, a little bit bigger to kind of house them all in. But um, not ginormous, and it'll probably fit on your shelf all right, which is all right. Um, but yeah, so first impressions is it's a very slick box, you know. Um, high quality, Joni Mitchell, Archives Volume 2, Reprise Years, 1968-1972. Kind of picture of Joni there, kind of through a loud box or something. Um, and I like this kind of logo here, this kind of like polar bear almost, you know. Should we have a look at the top? Same kind of logo here, Joni Mitchell Archives, Joni Mitchell Archives, and the bear there. Um, and I think this is meant to be like a silhouette of her, can you see that there? Potentially. Anyway, um, nice kind of blue, kind of textured thing at the top, which is quite cool. Um, on the back, whoop, we have a nice picture of Joni in a field there with her um, zither, no it's called something else. Um, dulcimer? Dulcimer? I think it's a dulcimer. Um, do correct me in the comments, I'm sure you all will. But um, a lovely kind of instrument which is all in one key, I think, or one scale, so it sounds very kind of harmonic when you play it. She plays a lot on blue, I'm pretty sure. Um, I own one myself, but it's kind of in pieces, honestly, so I've never actually played one. Um, but yeah, 10 LP is, like I said, so... 20 sides of vinyl. And I've not listened to all of this. I've only listened to a few of the selections, but some really good kind of a good overview of Joni's work, you know. So you've got Joni home demos here, late 1968. So they're excellent because it kind of shows the start of the song, the kind of genesis of them. Um, some home demos here. Uh, session, so song to a seagull session. Uh, that's kind of like in the studio itself. Um, it's got the date on there as well. So you can kind of see like the different um, environments she kind of brought these songs about. And live here, so Coffee House, 1968. She was very early, early days for Joni Mitchell, definitely. Um, again, Hilbo, Hilbo uh, Coffee House. Um, some nice stuff here. Intro to Dr. Junk. Um, very intimate performances. Studio sessions again. And these are all stretched out. They all have their unique artworks. Ladies of the Canyon Session as well. Nice. Uh, that's one of my favourite albums by Joni Mitchell. 
Um, and it ends with kind of the blue sessions here. River with French horns, very interesting. Um, obviously, blue is very stripped down, so very interested to hear some of the overdubs he might have kind of tried out. Greenpeace Benefit Concert, interesting. Um, very, very comprehensive, I'm sure. Um, so in a box like this, I'm like, how much replay value is there in this? Like, you find your favourites and you play them over. You're like, how long will it take to listen to the whole thing? Like, um, it's all Joni Mitchell as well. All Joni Mitchell. Um, anyway, I do like these boxes, how they are very comprehensive for the fans. Should we have a look at the side? So, same logo here. Um, the more I look at it, I don't think it is actually a silhouette of her, but it does kind of look like a, a silhouette. Um, very nice kind of finish again. Sides of hair, side on the back. The bottom, it's got the barcode. Um, 2022. Nice. Made in the USA. Very interesting. So, shall I... I'll open it like this, so you can kind of show you uh, the content from this angle. Uh, one thing I can tell about this flap is it's got a kind of magnet in it, which is really helpful to you know, it feels like a lot more of a premium product when it kind of snaps shut like that, which is really nice. Um, I don't want to open it too much because the hinges may, you know, weaken over time. Um, but you've got a kind of nice quote here as well, which is, I'm not a weeper, I'm a snarler. I just put all the weeping in the words. The words are the weeping. Very interesting, very... Um, uh, Joni Mitchell's a very introspective songwriter and that's quite a good quote which, I don't know, I, I, I get what she means there, you know, um, her, her lyrics may be quite um, quite introspective and kind of sad at times, especially blue, but uh, a defining character I'm sure, defining character, nice blue trim on here as well, um, it's almost like everything's leading to blue because that is definitely her most kind of well-known album. Uh, and most celebrated album. So the booklet is kind of tucked in here, which is really nice. It's it's not just kind of like slotted in. It's got um, its own kind of pouch, which is really nice to see. And then these are all the LPs. Um, so I'll kind of show the booklet first. It's quite a small one, to be honest, like probably a bit bigger. That's probably about the side of the CD, but um, maybe it could have been bigger. I don't know, at the same time, like a big booklet can, uh, it can be qu quite difficult to handle, I guess. But um, yeah, let's have a look at this booklet together. So, lovely picture there, lovely like technical picture of her looking at some antiques through like a fisheye lens. Uh, looks like she's just like got done, you know, busking or something in, in San Francisco or something. That was what that looks like. In conversation with Joni Mitchell, so this looks like um, kind of a, a contemporary interview with Joni Mitchell, talking about her memories of this. Here she is. Um, new album, May Change Your Mind, with Reprise album. Interesting. Um, and here she is at Newport Folk Festival, that looks really cool, uh, on the piano. Um, there's a picture of Bob Dylan like playing, this is 69, but there's a, a very similar performance with Bob Dylan in 1965, I think, playing Mr Tambourine Man. Um, that's a really cool picture there, of her outside again, the dulcimer, pretty sure it is a dulcimer. Um, please correct me though, I'm sure you will. Um, and it's kind of like the conversation. Here she is with uh, Jane, Elliot Roberts. Uh, uh, James Taylor I know is her lover this time. And um, it's what Blue is kind of named after, or like named for, or written about. Truth and beauty, that's hope, what I hope to deliver. Interesting. She's a true artist as well, Joni Mitchell. Like she, she painted a lot of her her album covers, and I think she is she sees herself as a a painter more of a songwriter, really, which is quite an interesting perspective, um, and very in very kind of intricate um, guitar lines in in her songs, and they're very layered, and a lot of her melodies are very complicated as well. Uh, is this with um but very expressive as well of course like not not just technical for the sake of it um interesting i think she was very judged as well at the time like cuz she didn't some people didn't really understand why she stood out to the other kind of singer songwriters um dear joni new york loves you but she managed to break through you know made california her home 
Uh, there you go. Uh, made California at home from her native Canada. And um, yeah, very interesting. I'm sure these, this interview is very kind of um, it, it, it revealing to the music um, about Laurel Canyon and stuff, Queen of the Canyon. Um, all about the people who lived there and stuff. Frank Zappa. What a time to be alive in that time. There she is. Um, older Joni with her cat. That's nice, isn't it? Um, here she is signing the reprise deal in 1968. Oh. What a happy girl, you know? Imagine getting signed to a major label like that. Oh, and here are all the tracks, which is really interesting. This is helpful uh, to have them all kind of down here. Nice. On oh, the tape box, that shows that it actually came from the original tapes. Um, you can't really believe that, you know, after the MoFi incident and all that, like when people put, um, oh, originally mastered from the tapes until they actually show you the tapes like that, you know, which is pretty cool. Top Gear BBC bro uh, Radio Broadcast. Wow. Chelsea Morning. I can't imagine flying around the track uh, listening to Chelsea Morning, but there you go. There she is with James Taylor. Um, I love her at this time. That's about it. That must be a sketch by her. Looks very Joni Mitchell-esque. Um, very cool. Nice booklet. Uh, I don't have time to read it all, but nice thing. Just pop it down here. Should we show you the contents of the box? Whoa! I will show you all of it. This is an unboxing video, of course. Um, some people, again, they prefer their, their unboxing videos quite concise. But this one's going to be a longer one because there's enough boxes to go through. Nice um, matte finish in here as well. Empty box. <clears throat> so, let's move these over here. Um, I think these are in chronological order. So let's go through these in one at a time. Nice picture of Joni there with her delicately holding her hair. Quite a nice image, you know. Um, Midnight Cowboy. This is apartment, home demos, apartment demos. Both sides now. Very cool. And, uh, I'll show you the discs. I may as well show you the discs as, as we go. Label there. Nice polylined inner sleeve as well. Um, so keeping them all safe, you know. I get the impression Joni Mitchell is very similar to uh, the likes of like Neil Young, how they take care with their their products and how they're produced, you know, from the best sources and that. And if you're paying as much as this box that is uh, worth, you better have a good sound quality. There she is behind a wall with a nice like Marshall stack there. Um, I wonder how they like amped that because. Obviously she's playing acoustic guitar, but you can't really plug it in because before the times of, I don't know, that that guitar looks kind of, it doesn't look like it uh, had an amp in it, a uh, pickup in it even. Sing Seagull, Apartments, Live at Ca uh, Canterbury House, The Coffee Shop. Some kind of um, repeat stuff so you can kind of see how the songs evolved and such. Again. Very similar label there. Nice. This is a nice image of Joni here. Kind of mid song, mid singing with a microphone there. And a big cross there, look at that. Big holy cross. Didn't get the impression she was uh, particularly religious, but there you go. Maybe it's just a. Uh, I don't know, decoration piece. On the, on the spines as well, I've, I've uh, neglected to show you. Uh, they've got the Joni Mitchell archives here, so you can put it on your shelf if you want. And then here, five, six. So I think each side is classed as like a volume there, five, six. Um, live, different set, second set, second set. Um, I think this is one thing though. Again, yeah, second set, second set. Interesting. So this is classed as one performance. Um, again, easier to keep track of them if they're if they're numbered. I'm sure because it's one of them things where you want to. There's enough of it. Joni Mitchell and her legs. And a nice Martin acoustic as well. 
the kind of folk strap. Very cool. This is um, seven come in the sunshine. Again, our apartment sessions. Here's the Top Gear BBC Radio broadcast from 1968. The gallery. That's quite a cool song. Um, that was off. Um, the gallery was off uh, Clouds, I'm pretty sure. Um, it was a good album by Journey. Um, quite sought after all these Journey Mitchell albums as well, especially the first couple. Um, the first one and, and things like that. Very cool. Here's Joni at the uh, piano with some spare mics around. Quite an image though, I do like that, like how it's in like a theatre and her guitar's just kind of sat here. And um, obviously you get a really nice sound out of a little baby grand like that. They're all uniform as well, like uh, I don't know what I feel about that but they're all very uniform on the rear which I guess again if you're looking for the right one, um, as I'm sure this box set would um, involve looking for the right the right tracks and stuff. Um, you want kind of the same the same concise thing so you can just kind of find your, your right track you want or the right side you want. Uh, first set, second set live at Carnegie Hall. I'm sure this is quite a significant event for her, Carnegie Hall like that. Um, a very uh, established gig and kind of you've not made it in New York until you've played Carnegie Hall. There's another one. Joni with a, that's a lovely picture isn't it, you know, um, against the black backdrop, doing some finger picking there, capo on. Um, what, a, what a microphone as well, very cool. It's a lovely artifact of the time. Again, Car Carnegie Ho Hall, um, again, encore, so it's over two LPs this one. And then it goes into the cloud sessions here, Conversation Blue Boy, very cool. Nice. I do like clouds, I think clouds is a more of an underrated one. Um, and again, I, I see that Blue is the culmination of all these uh, all these albums because it's kind of her most revered album. I think that that was what she was kind of heading for. She wanted to be taken more seriously as an artist rather than kind of just a, a silly singer-songwriter girl, you know. And there she is with a magnifying glass. Probably. It's not um, one of those ring lights, is it, which you use for YouTube and that. Uh, Cloud Sessions again. Dick Cavett Show. Dick Cavett's a bit of a legend, you know. If you've never watched any Dick Cavett stuff on YouTube, you got a, you're missing out, you know. Some legendary interviews. And he's still kicking as well, Dick Cavett, you know. Still around. Not doing his show anymore, but uh, some memories you could tell, I'm sure, you know. He did everyone. did, like, John Lennon, Jimi Hendrix, and George Harrison's a great one. But, yeah. A uh, couple of interviews, so the interviews on here, which is great. And then the fiddle and the drum, another rendition of it. Um, Lady in the Canyon sessions, going into the more kind of... I guess Lady in the Canyon's a bit more electric. Nice stuff. Here's another nice image. I do like all these these uh, album covers. I'm sure they'd look amazing, like, all on the wall together, you know. Um, here she is, kind of hidden amongst the bushes. Nice. Um, with cellos. Ladies in the Canyon with cellos. Very cool to hear them overdubs. And then just going into the blue sessions here. Case of You, California. Um, Greenpeace, Big Yellow Taxi Medley. Introduction by James Taylor. Very nice. BBC Broadcast, 1970. Which is a lot of stuff with um, BBC this time. Nice. All the labels are the same, but I'm kind of just showing you for consistency's sake. Nice thing. That's one of my favourites, to be honest. One of my favourite covers of the set. Here we are with uh, James again. Um, I'm sure these are quite revealing, um, like I say, because uh, she unfortunately broke up with him uh, for various reasons, as delved into in the Blue Album. But uh, yeah, My Old Man, River. River's like a Christmas song in a way, because it's kind of uses a minor, minor rendition of uh, Jingle Bells or something. Uh, BBC Broadcast, BBC Broadcast, both the same day, so it's the same thing. So half on her own. There, Mountain Dulcimer. Got it right, didn't I? Um, and then she shows off Carrie, which is a great track. Um, just making me want to listen to Blue. Again, maybe maybe I'm biased, but um, 
I think Blue is a, not just the best Joni Mitchell al uh, albums, but uh, one of the best kind of folk folk singer-songwriter albums of all time, you know. For free, with James Taylor. I don't think that's the Kendrick Lamar song they're breaking into, but um, yeah. And uh, last, last album, number 10, 1920. Uh, here she is in her like living room, I'm sure. Some kind of nice daffodils there. Some more James Taylor, Big Yellow Taxi. And ends with the Blue Sessions for late 1970, which uh, came out in 1971. Um, with some overdubs. Urge for Going, which was, didn't make the album. River with French Horns. Very interested to hear that one. Again, very similar label on that. And that's about it, really. That's the contents of the box. So, shall we... Should we take this into the other room and we'll kind of discuss discuss its content? Okay, guys. Uh, so you've seen the whole contents of the box. Got very ASMR um, at the end of that video or halfway through. You know, I wanted to kind of relax things down as we were looking through the various album covers and kind of the content, the box and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, in review, I'd say as not the biggest Joni Mitchell fanatic. Um, I certainly wouldn't be picking this up if, even if like you know, when it comes to folk singer songwriters, people know I'm a, um, a big Bob Dylan fan. But even if Bob Dylan did something like this, I don't think I'd pick up a 10 LP kind of variation of um, a lot of kind of live stuff and home broadcast. But if she's not on Spotify, and if I had to take Joni Mitchell to a desert island with me, I think this box would serve me well, you know, because it'd keep me going forever. Um, but I feel like the people who would be buying this box set have already got a lot of these albums um, on LP at least. Um, again, the replay value of something like this is, is I'd say, I'd struggle with because it's just, there's so many variations of the tracks and if you really want to listen to one, um, I mean, you've got to pull out the right version, you've got to find the right track on the back. But I guess that's part of the fun, really, you know, finding the the specific one you listen to. A lot of the pictures in here are really good because I find a lot of these pictures really transport you back to the time and considering it's very intimate performances uh, you really want that, you really want to be transported to the time when they were recorded. Um, as far as I know Joni Mitchell has been quite um, lock and key when it comes to demos and stuff so this is quite a revelation for the fans. Um, it is a really nice presentation box um, easy to find the tracks, like I said, um, all uniform rears and stuff, so if you are going to get it on LP format, um, which I presume you're getting it on LP because you want that kind of pure analogue sound, because otherwise, you know, CD might be better to go with this, you know, you don't hear me advocating for CDs a lot, but um, CDs for this scale uh, might be better off, I don't know. Uh, but I'd, I'd love to hear your comments in the uh, box below, you know, comment section below. If you have anything to add on this box set, if you're a massive Joni Mitchell fan and you want to tell me why, why this is the most important thing she's ever put out, I really want to hear it. And um, I read all the comments, so make sure you kind of drop it there, drop any messages for me, good or bad. Um, and yeah, that's about it. It's for sale in the shop. I'll drop the link for it down below. Uh, it's a very hard to find item, long out of stock, uh, so if you are thinking of picking one up, grab one before the price is kind of skyrocket. And um, yeah, it gets a thumbs up for me, you know, for sure. If you're a Joni Mitchell fan, it's, a, it's quite a treat. But yeah, thanks very much for watching guys, and um, I'll see you in the next one. See you in the next one. <laughs> like and subscribe, 